Welcome to Harvest Valley Worship Center's Sermon of the Week. You can discover more about our church, pastors, and special guests at hvwc.com. We hope that you are blessed by today's message. So with that, will you guys welcome up our favorite Aussie, Mark Crawford. Uh, good day. Uh, how you all doing? Hmm. <laughs> Um, I will admit to you, I'm a little bit, this may sound a bit crazy, but I um, feel like I'm going out of my comfort zone. Uh, so, um, is it okay? I'm, I'm, I'm not going to preach. Is that all right? Uh, I feel like I just want to share some things with you. Uh, uh, there's some things that I feel like God wants to do. Um, so um, I, I feel like it'll be more experiential, right, with a number of things um, um, happening rather than me, um, you know, speaking a particular, on a particular subject and then maybe praying or whatever else, which is what I'm normally comfortable about doing. Is that okay? Yeah. It's all right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, as, Paul, as um, Chris mentioned, um, I, I think it was about 10 years ago um, that um, I first came to Sandpoint. Uh, it was a divine encounter, um, and I want to give you this sort of information um, because it really it ties some things in and it really just um, shows some, some things. So it was really interesting that out of the connection that I had with the Labarge, with Tony and, and Gwinnett, um, we were connected with somebody, uh, they were connected with somebody here in Sandpoint who asked us to come up. And so I did a bit of research and um, I, I found that there were some very significant things about Sandpoint that really excited me. You know, like I was told that it was a winter meeting place of uh, uh, eagles. They, they flew in because the lake didn't freeze over and it was a winter wintering place for them and that was pretty exciting to me. Right, because you know, prophets, particularly um, eagles, mean something. You know, I can sit and watch eagles for hours, but get bored with everything else. Um, and um, then I discovered that there was an explorer in the uh, a Catholic, a Flemish Catholic priest by the name of Father de Smit. Now, Father de Smit um, uh, began um, a journey from somewhere around about La Barge all the way up to here, Sandpoint. And he uh, originally named um, Priest Lake um, in a different particular name, and it was changed to uh, his, you know, what who he was as a priest, right? So there's this connection. So I I came on up here, and um, so excited we we're going to a place called Hope, and I thought that's great because I'm teaching a lot about hope. So there's actually a place called Hope. It's like. I mean, I'm just prophetic, you know, sort of. So, you know, I see all these things and say, oh, that's a prophetic, that's a prophetic sign. So I came up here and I wasn't prepared for the reception in the spirit. I got up here and I was impacted by the atmosphere in the place. I felt really isolated, alone. I had people all around about me. I struggled into the expect of get me out of here. So I'm coming up here excited, want to be up here, want to be in this place. I knew that it was a place that a lot of things had come out of. I'd heard about, um, I'd, I'd experienced you know, lighthouse salad dressings. I knew it came from here, right? I had been to Coldwater Creek store and I was told that it came out of here. Right, and I was told that there was a high level of entrepreneurial uh, spirit in the in the place. So I wanted to be up here, and I got up here, and I wanted to get out. 
It doesn't make sense, does it? Yeah. Right? And, and so I, I went for this for about a day or, or something until I discovered, wait, it's something that's happening in the spirit. Right? Now, it's really important for us to understand that Ephesians 6.12 says, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. We don't fight with flesh and blood, but we spend most of our life fighting with flesh and blood. We interpret what's going on by what we can see or feel, and we think it's people don't like us, people don't, all of those sorts of things. And most of the time, we're dealing with a spirit. We're dealing with a spiritual force, right? So we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, right? So stop it. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. The trick of the enemy is to convince us that it's not principalities and powers, that it's flesh and blood. Right? For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. So I was fighting that. Until I recognized what it was and we brought it out into the light. Right? I had a meeting at uh, Pastor Ken Lawrence's church and I just brought it out and told everybody. Okay? Then I met this guy, um, this pastor, who came from some place called Hidden Valley or something. <laughs> right? And, I, and we, I, I started talking to him and then he started to share some things which I'd never really heard from a pastor before. I mean, you know that Chris is not economical with words. <laughs> but I heard, I heard some things from him that I'd not heard elsewhere. So there began uh, my, my journey to hear. This is really all important because I want you to understand. Um, and every time that I've come here, um, I, I've had an extraordinary sense of a place that God wants to do something out of. Like, like every place I go to, and I go to lots of churches, that place is special for the moment that I'm there because I'm focused on it, right? But there's something extraordinary about this place. And I'm not just saying that because I don't do that. I'm not just saying that just because I'm here. I've got other ways to make you like me. <laughs> right? It's a, it's a prophetic place. I remember saying to you um, on one of my visits that God wants to cause you to be an unoffendable people. Now, why would he want to do that? Right? Because offense is something that destroys relationship and destroys churches. So therefore, Jesus said this. He says, it's impossible for offense not to come to you. Right? Hello? Jesus said, it's impossible for offenses not to come to you. So offenses will come. But offense is... Offense um, is either something that you get snared into or you walk right past it and go through the doorway of destiny. But if he's wanting to create a people who are unoffendable, that it means he wants to do something that is very significant. Could you imagine? What would it be like if you had a, a community of people who were so healed they couldn't get offended? Wouldn't that be amazing? It'd be like heaven on earth. Every time that I come here, I find myself doing something that I've never done before. Right? And this trip is, is, the, is the same. Um, and so therefore, I felt like 
God say that this place is a place of firsts. So be careful, right, of what you sing. Because you just said, you just sung, God have your way, do what you want to do. And it's easy to sing, but it's harder sometimes to operate in. Because we get upset because God wants to do what he wants to do. And we don't like it because it's out of the ordinary, even though we've already given him permission to do what he wants to do. So make up your mind. Either sing the song or don't. Here I am, God, use me. And he goes to use me. He wants me to do something, to step out, and I, I, I'm, I'm not happy with him because I'm stepping out and doing what I already told him I could want to do. So this is a place of first, I, I really believe it's innovative, and, I, I, and, and it's, it's never that you've arrived, it's just on a, on a journey. Now one of the things that I felt God say to me, uh, um, for you guys, is that you're going to experience things that you would say, this is too good to be true. Right? Now, that is what the world says. If something is too good, then it's probably not true. Right? Or they use the word, it's too good to be true. Right? Now, if we recognize God is good, then if it's too good, it must be God. Right? Now, I, I know people misuse that. But it really feels like it here is that I could see you, I, I could feel you just being overwhelmed with the goodness of God. Right? I, I want to do something now, and please just bear with me because it might feel like it's just about me, and it is. But, <laughs> no. Um, sorry, no. Um, <laughs> I can't help myself this morning. I, so I've written two books, and the back at the back, you know, uh, uh, fascinated by heaven on earth. But the other one was who let the joy out. And so I'm going to do joyous things. I'm going to do stuff like that. So, I mean, you, you can have fun with me or not, uh, but I'm going to have fun. Um, anyway, so <laughs> uh, this prophetic, this is a portion of a prophetic word, and I want to read it to you for a reason. Right? I think I've done this one other time. It's April the 30th, 2010, this word came in Australia by a prophet. And he said this to me, I'm setting you up with new spheres and I'm going to begin to establish you in, in spheres that you have operated in, but there's going to become more governmental release. <clears throat> there's going to come more government release in certain areas that you've walked in. Now listen to this, the Lord says, I'm giving you the north of America. God says, I'm going to send you into the religious circles and I'm going to bring you amongst those who are called upon my name and walked at a level. But the Lord says, son, I'm going to give you favor in North America and I'm going to give you favor in parts where there'll even become a base established in America and there'll be a place of operation that will have your mark on it. But really it will have my mark on it, says the Lord. Out of that base, says the Lord, you will spend longer periods. Not yet, but it will come, says the Lord, that you will spend longer periods for I've called this nation to come to her knees. 2010. I've called this nation to not be the nation that it has been, but be the nation that I've destined it to be, says the Lord. And I'm sending men and women from nations to come to her, to call her to a place of reformation. To call her to a place of realignment. And restoration, says the Lord. I, I, I don't know, maybe it's my accent. Let, let me just read this again. Right, I've called her to reformation. I've called her to realignment and restoration. I would have to say to you that that word was true then, but it's even truer now. So I want you to understand, here I am minding my own business, visiting other places in the US, and God connects me to a place that I've never heard of, right? Because I've got destiny here, right? 
I love being here. I feel very much at home. I, I pulled into the, into the car park and I was, thought, well, I guess parking, I'll park there. So I pulled in there and the Lord said, you're not a guest. It's like, <laughs> it's like I don't know where else to park. I mean, there was a disabled one next to me and I was certainly, that's not mine either. So God called me here, and then he's got a destiny for this nation, right? Now, where there's destiny, that's where the enemy will attack, right? Where there's destiny, that's where the Lord wants to expand and bring it into a place. And the kingdom is always about expansion. So like I said to you, um, I really feel like the Lord wants to do some experiential type sorts of things today. He wants to demonstrate some things because we can talk about things until the cows come home. Do you have that saying? Yeah. Oh, you know what I mean. Okay. <laughs> Just thought it might have been a bit Aussie. <laughs> um, so, um, where's Paul? Yeah, that Paul. Yeah, he didn't stay there. Okay. Um, you are a sound man, right? Did, right? You got that? Okay. So I kept hearing the Lord just say to you, now is the time. Not tomorrow. Not next week. Now is the time. And he's bringing you into living in the present, but being aware of the future. Right? And there's lots of occasions where... You need to grasp the now, to go after the now, to do the now, to bring about the now, okay? And I can see you laying hands on people and declaring things that begin now and they do, right? But that's because you have embraced the word living in the now. And that you've embraced that now word, you've lived in it, and now you have the authority to be able to declare that to other people. I really even feel like, and it's something that God had gave to me, but I feel like you're going to get it too, is that you can declare the finish of a season, the beginning of a new season, right? And, and you're just going to know the right time to do that. It's not going to ask the Lord and seek the Lord. It's just like you have this impression, this is what I want to do. Okay? Um, the... Young guy here. Daniel? Is that your name? Hi, Daniel. How are you? Good. Um, um, I, I kept, when I was sitting in the front of the seat, um, I, I could see that you were there. And I felt like the Lord just say, um, you, have a, you have a gift of leadership. Right? You, you, like, it's just intuitive in you. There's an entrepreneurial spirit on you. And that entrepreneurial spirit um, is going to manifest it self quite significantly as you grow older and older what it means is that you know solutions to things that you can look at something and say well why don't they do this why don't they do that it's the most natural thing that it's it's just naturally a part of you you don't see it's like it's a big thing but it's a big thing for other people because there are people that are still struggling with the problem you've got the solution right so i really feel like you're going to be known as a solutionary Right, And that's going to be a part of it. You're going to see things that you can do. Now, the key thing for you is to figure out, uh, with other people help, what things you need to pursue, because there's lots of things. Well, you, can, you can see. Right, You have an ability to be able to see things that other people can't see, but you don't think it's very special because it's just normal to you. Right? right? Yeah. yeah, it's just like, this is just, just normal, but that, it's pretty profound. Right, and so it would be a good idea for you to 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 be listening to or looking at or reading at other entrepreneurial type people. You know, people that have that have uh, really taken that ability and gone off and developed all sorts of things. And there's some key people around 
um, um, who do that. Richard Branson out of England would be one of those people. Um, you know, I'm not talking about their lifestyle. I'm talking about their gifting. There, there's many others um, who were innovative in, in... They don't just accept the status quo. That's how it's always done. Okay? So there's an ability for you to be able to lead other people in that and also to be able to expand that. So um, it'd be a good idea for you to, as I just said, is, you know, look at, look at the lives of some of those people that get involved in that. Okay? Uh, Robert. Robert. Um, there's, you're really in a transformative time. Right? when God is bringing about some areas of transformation. I mean, at the moment, you are a transformer, right? You already are a transformer because you transform, I think I got this right, you transform people's places, you know, like bathrooms or whatever, you know, physically, right? But the Lord is going to take you into a, is in the, really in the process now of taking you into a greater place of transformation. It really needs to be a place where you're completely, always focused upon, okay, Lord, how do you want to transform me? How do you want to change me? Where do you want to try it? Because um, he's bringing you into a, into a greater place where you were going to see uh, lots of transformation in people's lives. It's one of the major hallmarks on you and the prophetic gift that's on you is about bringing about transformation. Right, just focus focus a lot on that, on on how you can impart transformation into a person's life. Right, it, you know, it's like you know, people are going to look at you and say, "Wow, that's a transformer more than meets the eye." <laughs> right, so transformation is is in big letters across uh, over you. It's it, but the wonderful thing about that is you're going to get transformed. And it's not going to come with a sign or an email or anything else that lets you know that it's transformation happening in you. Because God knows that if he gave you warning that he was doing transformation, you would shortcut it. <laughs> right? So it's not going to feel like it's transforming, but it is very transforming in its effect. Right? Right? He loves you too much to leave you where you are. Um, it's Sheila, isn't it? Yeah, Sheila. Sheila is uh, an Australian word for a woman. Right? You know, like typical Australian is like, hey, Sheila, you're talking about a woman. Right? It's slang. Right? Um, and so there's some reality about that is that one of the strengths on you is ministry to women. It's not the only thing, but it's ministry to women. And I, 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 I think there's a place in which you need to be looking at how you can step more into that because it's really every time, every time somebody calls your name, right, there is that r reference to what's the anointing and calling on your life which is not exclusively, not just to, but very much to women, right? So I would, uh, I would look at that. Uh, Charlene, um, <clears throat> I, I saw you um, releasing key breakthroughs in your prayers to people. Um, it's, it's almost like you have, <clears throat> it's almost you, like you have this power to unstuck people. I'm sorry, but it's not a really good word, but, well, it is a good word, but it's like you have this unsticking anointing. It's, it's almost like you've got this solvent, right, in the spirit, in a good way. So people that are stuck and they can't get out of where they're at, they can't get out of whatever else it is, that you have an anointing to break them out of that, right? You have an ability to break. And I could see you laying hands on people and you're just you're declaring some things and speaking some things in and um, you, they're getting unstuck, right? 
from where they're at. Right? It's like you just apply the solvent of the Spirit to unstick some things. And it really releases people into their destiny. Right? That, that's basically what it is. Ah, where's Will? Will. Okay. So, Will, um, <clears throat> you know that at Labarge I told you something that I'd never done before. And I, I, I said, well, here's a prophetic word for you. This is part A. Right? Then I said, well, I'm going to give you part B. You ready? Okay. Would you... Um, Stand up and come down here. And uh, Levi, would you join us? And Chris, would you join us? So you might have been expecting part B was some words. Well. I haven't got enough to tip over you. But um, I, I really felt like the Lord say that I wasn't just to give you words, that I was to actually impart something to you with your dad and with this man who's mentoring you and, uh, and in front of everybody. Right? Okay. So you already have a wisdom that's beyond your age. Right? Um, but I, I really feel that um, this anointing is going to bring an increase on that. But it's going to bring a courage. And it's going to make things, help to make things make sense. Because you said yes to God, because you said yes, you're going to be a releaser of Yes. Right, So whatever you agree to or let God do through you, you're going to release to other people. Right? And I want to say to everybody around here, he's young. Don't fall into the trap that King Saul did with David, the one who killed the Goliath, by trying to restrict him in his youth. You hear that? Right? Right? Don't despise small things. So, you know, younger things. Right? Be a champion for what God is doing. Right? And let him take down some Goliaths because you get to experience the benefit of getting rid of some Goliaths. Come on. Amen. Yeah? Yeah? Hello? Hello? All right, so I'm going to use this anointing oil, right? This is not anointing you for a position, right? It's anointing you for the call of God that's already been, ex on, is already on your life, okay? So uh, let's reach out. So, Father, I just anoint this young man, Will, who has said yes to you. Father, and we know that, as I declared, it's, it's not normal. His walk. And so there are extraordinary things that you're going to have him do. But I speak protection around him. Father, I declare that you will station angels and I feel like there's a couple already standing behind you, big guys that are going to look after you, prepare. But you are going to hear things, see things and experience things that you could never dream of. You're going to go places that you could never have done by yourself. That you are going to see lives change before your eyes. 
You're going to see things that many people twice, three times your age have never dreamed about seeing. But I thank you that, Lord, you're going to create a confident humility in this young man. That you're going to teach him things that he's going to get to explore, expand, and go after. And so today we anoint him, which is simply a confirmation of the anointing on his life. It's simply a declaration of what you have done and are going to do. And as you create a revolution for a generation, as you create a revolution for a generation, that generation shall throw aside the things that have ensnared them, the things that have drawn their attention, and they shall be like a Jesus revolution, like a, 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 a move that is unstoppable, that will change society that will change government thinking, that will change things all around because nobody can stop it. I see you raising up young people who the devil is really scared of and, they're run- and the enemy is running the other way because he doesn't want to tangle with them. Young people who know who they are and because of the security on your life, you're going to raise sons and daughters around about you, together with others, and they're going to be the most secure that we've ever seen. The most healed that we've ever seen. And they're going to be part of a generation. They're going to be part of a group of people that, that do all manner of things, but in particular, they're going to be strong in each of the seven mountains. So today... We say yes, yes, because you said yes. Yeah, thank you, God. And we come in agreement with that. Yeah. And we acknowledge the call of God on your life, the anointing on your life. And we say, let it be so. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, is um, Lydia here? Lydia, hello, Lydia, down the back. Um, Lydia, in, in, um, in Acts sixteen fourteen, it talks about Lydia in there, which you probably know about it, that she was a seller of purple. Seller of purple cloth was uh, a very expensive item. So she was quite a significant businesswoman. I want to say to you that you you have quite an influence in the marketplace. Far more than you recognize, far more than you realize. Uh, Jeff, are you going somewhere? Oh, come back real quickly because I've got something for you. (laughs) No pressure. (laughs) So if he doesn't come back, you know, (laughs) anyway. (laughs) I was just... um, I, I, I really see. I really see you in that whole uh, marketplace uh, arena, uh, having influence. Um, and re- I, it, it's see, Lydia had had quite a lot of influence and really made some way for Paul to be able to minister to people that were really in the occult and new age and all of those sorts of things. She seemed to open up the door in, in, supporting, um, in supporting him. So I think in the marketplace, there's going to come uh, quite a place in which you open up some things. Okay. Uh, Jeff, while you're on your feet, you may as well come down here. Um. <clears throat> I 
one of the reasons that you're here is to be restored. Um, so can I pray for you? Please. All right. So I need you there because you're tall. And I want to get my hands on your head. Um, reach out, reach out. So I, I release healing uh, to the events that have caused, traumatic events that have caused in the days prior to you being here that have damaged areas that would be declared by most people around to be irreparable. And so I release healing that goes from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Every area neuro neurologically that has been damaged in any way, shape or form, I speak and declare and release the healing of God to those areas. Healing you. Connecting things that are disconnected. Bringing things into order that are out of order. So bringing levels into correct place. And doing a restorational work. For God says, I am the restorer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I am doing a work of restoration on you at a surface, at a deep place. But I'm restoring you like anybody would restore an object so it's brought back to where it should be in order that it may be effective, that it may be usable. So the Father says, I'm doing a work of restoration on you so that you are a restorer. I'm restoring you that which has been stolen, that which has been damaged, that's what, that has been tried to be wrestled away from you. I'm restoring you. I'm restoring you so that you can be a restorer. So that you can be a releaser of res restoration. Mmm. The Lord brought you from a distance away to this place. You thought it was for another reason. But he brought you here because he knew what you needed. And you didn't know what you needed. But now you know what you need. And you can now embrace what you need. I don't mean this offensively, but we do call the Father sometimes Jehovah Sneaky. <laughs> because he knew what you needed. Yep. And if he had told you what you were coming here for, you may not have come. <laughs> but this is just the beginning. And you're one of the people that are going to experience the goodness of God that is going to... Uh, impact you in a in a quite an amazing um, way. So, everything that's going to happen to you, right? Everything that has been happening to you is for a reason. It's not just for you to keep here. It's for you to let minister out of to release to other people. Because you have when that happens to you, they, uh, you know, it's it's ability to happen here. One of the things that that we've been focusing upon is a sound mind from um, Timothy where it says, well, we'll talk about it in a minute, but that, that's an area of strength, right, that you're going to minister to. So wherever you have somebody that's struggling with thoughts or wherever else,
you can pray for them. Right? You can lay hands on them. Yeah, come on. Okay? Come on. Right? Okay. So if there's any... Let's, let's, do, let's just do with that right at the moment. So if, if, you, if, you, have, if you struggle with uh, anxiety, panic attacks, thoughts, overthinking, all of those sorts of things, would you just stand up right now? You, you stay there. <laughs> just stand up quickly right now. Okay? And so anybody that's a, that is a, near the people that are standing up, just turn around and lay hands on them. Go and lay hands on them. Actually put hands on them. Get up out of your seat so that you've got hands on them, right? Right? Just make sure everybody's got some, everybody has got some hands being laid on them, okay? So we're going we're gonna to do with this right at the moment. So Father, right now in the name of Jesus, we declare that you have not given us fear, intimidation, timidity, but you have given us power, love, and a sound mind. So, Father, we just say no more trouble in the thinking and the mind region. Father, we declare you have a sound mind. So every area of trauma, every moment of trauma in your life, whether you recognize it or not, we today, by the power of the Spirit of God, lift off the effect of that trauma off your life. We lift it off. We lift it out of your mind. We lift it out of the place where it has an influence, where it's had a place in which it has taken up residence and it has no right to. It has an influence that it has no right to. And we say, in the name of Jesus, we terminate the assignment of that. We terminate the agreement of it. We terminate the effect of it. And we declare, your destiny is to have a sound mind. The gift of God to you is a sound mind. Do you agree? agree. So we stand today in the authority of the truth. In the power of God, in the love of God, and release to you a work of the Spirit of God that happens in every area, every way, every possible place to bring about a sound mind, sound thinking in your mind today. Anxiety, you to go. (coughs) Panic attacks, you go. No more. Overthinking. Places in which fear. So numbing that you can't do anything. You can't go anywhere. In places in which you speculate what people are saying about you. We release you from it. We say it's done, it's finished, no more. We cancel that. And now we release the healing balm, the healing work of the Holy Spirit that restores, that restores, that restores and restores and restores and restores. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We receive that right now in the name of Jesus. Do you agree? agree. Amen. You know, um, just one word, just one moment can make a significant difference. It can change everything. Right? Just one moment. Just one prayer like that can change. Can change everything. (sighs) You agree? (laughs) Um... I I would like to do something. Um, 
Uh, I, I spoke here last night and we did an activation last night, right? Please hear my heart. Um, I was disappointed that most of you weren't there. And, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm not having a go, please, 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 hear my heart. So I started talking to the Lord. I was, I was after the Lord and I said to Chris, I, I think I'll just preach the message again. Right? The reason that I would like to do that, not just because I like the sound of my voice or, you know, you just... But because God gave me a tool. God has given me something that I, I, I released at Labarge and I released here last night. And, and the cry of my heart was, a whole lot of you didn't get that tool. Didn't get that moment. Right? And so I, 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 wanted to, I wanted to give the rest of you that today. Do, do you know what I mean? And it, it may not make sense to you. It may be like, oh, well, he's just doing this or whatever else. Um, but I want to tell you how it's really something very significant. And so let me explain it to you like this. Um, in the early part of this year, I, I came into this country and um, because I don't live here all of the time, I, 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 I feel the, 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 the atmosphere a lot more than you would because you live here all the time, right? Do you understand that we can become so familiar, familiarity breeds contempt, so that you can become familiar with something so it loses its, it loses its oomph, it loses its, its excitement. Right? So um, when I came into this country early on, I, uh, I, I noticed how intimidated I felt. And I felt like the spirit of intimidation was right everywhere I went. Right? Fear and intimidation. It felt very chaotic. And I, I was really noticed it because I've not felt it in this country before. Right? So you realize I'm talking about the spirit. I'm not talking like Ephesians says. Our fight is not against flesh and blood. It's against principalities and powers. It's against the spiritual force. Right? I was setting that all up today and to get to this point. So, um, so I, I started preaching um, about intimidation and um, used a couple of passages and I did it once and I thought, well, that's, that's, that's great. I'll move on to the next church and have something different. And the Lord said, no, you won't. You'll do the same one again. And I was like, what? Okay, I'll do it again. Because I, 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 don't, have, I don't live like that. I don't live like, oh, I'm going to go to Sandpoint. I'll just pull out one of my sermons and I'll just preach it. I don't do that. That's not me. So I finished that place and then the Lord said, okay, I'm going to take you to the next place in Colorado. Right? Same message. Right? Then to Peter DeWitt's church, same message. And, and it's just like, and, and the Lord said, no, this is a message that I've called you to this country to deliver. Right? I'm, I want to do something in the area of of." releasing the people from intimidation. So I see myself as creating hubs of people, or groups of people who are not subject to this spirit. Now, intimidation creates chaos. Intimidation creates illogical behavior. Intimidation fear, right? Hello? And as I've already mentioned to you today, um, oh, let me just give you a quick, a quick illustration of that, okay? Now, the people of God get delivered um, out of Egypt, right? They've been slaves in Egypt, and God delivered them by Moses out of that place of slavery. He takes them to the Red Sea, right? And he parts the Red Sea, takes them across. That's enough for me. Right? You've got me. Right? But not the people. So he takes them miraculously through the Red Sea. I can only just imagine what it looks like. What it would look like walking across and seeing the sea banked up on this side and the sea banked up on that side and walking on, 
I mean, just like, whoo. I'm done. Like, it's the same when Jesus fed the 5,000. I'm done. Like, I want to get that DVD when I get to heaven, into eternity. I want to get, I want to look at it because I want to figure out, how did you do that? Anyway, that's beside the point. So they get to the promised land and then God says, okay, I'm going to select 12 from each, one from each tribe to go into the land to spy out the land. But I want you to understand, I'm giving you the land. The land's yours, right? So you go in there and um, have a look around and see what it looks like and all those sorts of things. So they go into the land. All 12 see the same things. But two of them come back with a different report. Joshua and Caleb. Now, 10 of them come back and they say, oh, we look like grasshoppers in the eyes of the giants that are there. Right? We can't do this. We can't take it. And Joshua and Caleb come back and said, what did you see? Right? They were so ticked off with them, they ripped their clothes and said, you're dead to us. You don't exist. This is ridiculous. This is stupid. This is illogical. Right? Why? Because were they super faith people? No, they just believed God. They just believed God. God said, I'm giving you the land. They went in and said, okay, now, where are we going to put the Walmart? Uh, we we got to find a place for some barbecue grill. Right? And uh, where are we going to build our house? We better look for a good spot because if we don't take it, somebody else will get it. The 10 went in there looking at, how are we going to do this? How are we going to do this? How are we going to make this happen? Wow, look at those giants. Wow, wow, they're too big for us. We just look like little, we can't make this. We can't do this. We can't, we can't, we can't, we can't. It's too big for us. So they submit to intimidation. They submit to fear. And they come back and they take a whole nation, a whole generation with them. Because they didn't believe God. And you know what's even more interesting? That for 40 years, God left the promised land with all... I mean, my goodness, it took two men to carry a bunch of grapes. It took two men to carry a bunch of grapes. They could feed a family for a week on one grape. Right? So for 40 years, God left the promised land in the hands of the enemy rather than the people of God because he knew that the enemy was less of a problem than the people of God walking in unbelief. You don't understand what power you have. You do not understand what authority you have. You do not understand fully that the God who lives inside of you is waiting for you to agree with him. Just as Joshua and Caleb. We don't, nobody remembers who the, the names of the ten were. Everybody remembers it was Joshua and Caleb. Joshua and Caleb had so much courage to stand up and to be able to say, we can do this, and contrary to everybody else who was, what, believing the doubt and unbelief? That's what intimidation does. That's what that spirit does. The spirit is, the, is, the, is, is, is it's so intimidating that we're quick to say, we can't do that. That's too difficult. We haven't got the money. We haven't got the resources. We couldn't do that. We can't do that. We're just a small group of people. We're just in this, all that sort of stuff. That's what intimidation wants. Exactly what those 10 came up with. Now, in 2 Timothy 1... It says this, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, 
God has not given us a spirit of fear. And I can say it really nice like that. And it's like, yeah, okay, that's nice, right? But I don't believe it's what Paul was saying. I believe that Paul was saying it like this. God has not given you a spirit of fear, so stop having anything to do with it. Stop it. Right? Now, we can put it into nice little sort of nice terms that are sort of palatable, but that's not why I don't believe that's what he was saying. I don't, he was saying, listen, you have not been given a spirit of fear. You have no right to have anything to do with it. When it comes knocking, don't answer the door. But I'll tell you what, you can have stacks of, you can have abundance of, and it's power, love, and sound mind. That's our wheelhouse. That's our place of living in. That's where we can live in. Now, you will probably hear, if you haven't already heard, some prophets who have been declaring that there's coming a time in, in this country of financial difficulties, you know, worse than depression or all of those sorts of, of the depression. Um, and it may or may not be the case, right? It doesn't take too much uh, um, prophetic insight to see that that's an area that could be hit, right? Yeah. Hello? That's very easily, when everything, anything is touched in relation to finances, that's an easy place where fear can come into. Right? Yes? Very easy. Doesn't take very much of that. You can tell that with the stock market. Right? It can die really, really quickly just on a rumor. Yeah? And you know what it's like if... You know, you have the occasion where your bills exceed your income real quickly. And the last thing you want to hear about is somebody talking about giving. But the Bible says the world of the generous gets larger and larger. Generosity is not about what you do or what you give. It's about an attitude that you have maintained. Because God is generous, so it's like we want to we want to be like Him. Yes. Right? That scripture then goes on to say the world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. Right? The enemy is stingy. So it's just a choice of who you're going to go with. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, let me say that again. It's just a choice of who you're going to go with. Right. So the world of the generous gets larger and larger. And, the, uh, and, and listen, it's not just about money. Amen. It's an attitude. Yeah. Yeah. Right? It's an expectation. It's like, I'm going to be generous in my giving thanks. I'm going to give yeah. generally in my compliments. I'm going to be generous in every part of my life. And because of that, then I flow in my generosity. Because if I see somebody in need, I go and help them. If I'm driving along the road and there's a car that's broken down, I stop and to see how they, because I'm just generous, even though I'm rushing to be somewhere, right? Just remember that God usually brings divine encounters at the most, at the most inconvenient times, just to say. So don't miss them, right? But if you have a generous, generous part, it's, it's you're looking to be generous, but if you're stingy, you're looking how to be stingy. Wow. So the Lord has been um, started at Labarge um, because previous to that, I was really, I was praying for, and I want to do that with you today with intimidation. But he, I felt him just saying there is coming a time when what is going to intimidate people the most is going to be in the financial sector, the financial arena. It's, it's already there. And I, 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 could, I, held, I felt him say, I want to exempt a whole bunch of people from that. Amen. Right? I want to exempt people from it. And, and I, was, I was asking the Lord and um, I felt like he said, I'm going to do it because 
because people use that which is going to be used against them to operate in the opposite, right? So if we are meant to operate in power, love, sound mind, right? We can use those to actually create an event that we draw the line and say, you have no effect upon me. You have no authority over me, right? And we can say, this day, the 18th of August, right? Right, Jeremy? It's Jeremy's birthday today, by the way. Just entering into a new decade, right? I told him last night, I was the same age at his age. It's profound. Um, But you can say today, right, today, (laughs) today, right this day, you've got something to say, hey, uh, you can nick off intimidation because I dealt with you on this day. You can go, right? Don't bother. Don't bother coming. Don't bother knocking on the door. You can ring the doorbell all you like, but I'm not answering it um, because I dealt with you on this day. And some of you had an opportunity to do that last night, and some of you had an opportunity to do that last night, and in Labarge, just remember, you have triple anointing on it. You have a triple opportunity on it. So if you're thinking about how powerful this is, then you're looking for it for every opportunity to be able to say, no, 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 this is a point. Right? So I, my heart was, my really heart, my, can you get this? Can you really just understand that I wanted you, I wanted everybody to be here last night, but I wanted everybody to have have, have the opportunity, to have the opportunity to go from here with a tool to be able to say no. Right? Can, can you please see my, my heart here? Because whenever you talk about money and all of those sorts of stuff, people can get a little bit offended or those sorts of things. We shouldn't. Right? So I just want you to understand my heart, that I wanted to give you an opportunity. It's simply an invitation. If you don't want it, then it's fine. Right? No pressure. Um, but what I do want you to understand is that when you can, did, when you can make a point, a place, it's like a prophetic act that takes place, that you can then war with that. Whenever it comes your way, it's like, nah, done, finished. And I get to do this a few times, so I've, I've got a bit of a, I feel like a strength in that to be able to say no. Right? Now, and, and I'm getting to practice it. Because not just before I left, my, my, my wife lost her job. And we lost a whole lot of income in two days. Right? And so I had to start saying, no, God, that fear is not going to. And, and I, I lasted very little time than I would normally have done. I would have, lasted, would have gone into meltdown over days. And it just lasted just a day, right? I'm not, I'm not, please, I'm not telling you that other than I'm being, I want to be real with you. I want to be vulnerable with you to tell you what's, what's going on. And I just believe that God has given us a key. And the key is have nothing to do with fear and intimidation, but have a lot to do with power. Have a lot to do with love. Have a lot to do with sound mind. And you can use one of those because he's given you authority to use it to be able to do something in relation to those. So it would be wrong of me to say all of that without giving you an opportunity to activate it, right? So I'm going to hand over to Chris. Okay, well, you'll see a basket up here. We're going to take a moment. I want you to begin to pray and consider. God, in, in order to defeat in my heart intimidation, 
I need to sow into power, love, and a sound mind. God's actually calling us into an activation. And it's not about an amount. It's not like, ooh, if I give more, it's worth more. It's, that's not how it works. It's about what does God put in your heart to sow in, to defeat. Now, one of the things that Mika and I have been able to do, we shared this last night, we've been able to do this several times, where we have been, in, we, we sensed intimidation, and we were like, wait, August 9th, 2024, we dealt with intimidation, and we sowed into that. It's over. It's not, it doesn't have any hold on us. And we just shake it off and we move on. It's powerful. I'm telling you, this activation is very, very powerful. Allow it to sink into your heart. So we're going to give you a moment just to consider. Pray, God, how do you want me to sow into this? Now, one thing I will tell you is we're not interested in, in how much this is. This is between you and the Lord, 100%. So break intimidation in your giving in some way, in some way. My hope is that every single one of you are able to do something to break intimidation off of your life. I also believe that this is going to break open a fresh anointing for evangelism on this church. There's an anointing of boldness that God wants to release here for the gospel to move forward where we have been cowards or we have cowered or we have watched at a distance. God is saying, no, it is time to be bold. It is time to be bold. Let intimidation be broken off of you today. So we're going to just take a moment. I'm going to pray. As soon as you know what that is, I'm going to ask that you go ahead and just sow that in here. Um, Zeph... I don't uh, see Zeph. Okay, great. Chris, can you put up the tithe offering slide up there, please? Thank you. If you want to give online, just put it in the conferences section, right? So we'll know, we'll know that, that that's what that's for. Um, we're sowing into Mark as well. Allow, allow whatever, whatever it is that the Lord wants you to give, sow that. Break intimidation, okay? Father, I thank you. You are good in every way. You are good in every way, God. You are breaking forth in this place a fresh anointing of freedom, hope, healing. Lord, I ask in Jesus' name that you would open up our hearts and our minds to step in fully into the places that you have for us. God, that we would not be drawing back or that we would not watch at a distance, but God, we would fully step in with boldness. With When we have felt intimidated, we would say no. August 18th, 2024, we dealt with intimidation. It has no hold on our life. Father, I ask in Jesus' name that you would wake us up. Bring us into the fullness of what you want for us right now. Lord, I'm asking in Jesus' name that you just begin to move on every heart as you're led, Lord, as you lead us. Holy Spirit, will you speak? Speak clearly. Yeah, we just trust you, God. It's your word. Whatever you ask us to do, we'll do, God. And we let go of our need to control, our need to judge, our need to have it our way. We say, God, whatever you want to do, we're here. We're here. We know that we can partner with you, not only in our finances, but we can partner with you in this spiritual battle to defeat fear, anxiety, and intimidation today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Take a moment. Consider. And when you're ready, just... Go ahead and bring that offering up. And the reason why I put it up here is because, hey, why don't you break off the intimidation? Yeah. Oh, what are people going to say? They're going to look at me. They're going to, yeah. Oh, well, 
Break off the intimidation. Get after it. Yep, break it off. Come get it. Praise the Lord. Amen. just going to give one more minute we declare courage over you right now courage over you right now in Jesus name intimidation go spirit come intimidation go spirit come thank you Lord thank you Lord So what I'd like to do just to finish off is uh, ask you if you would stand. Uh, I'm going to pray uh, just in relation to intimidation and those sorts of things that we've been talking about. Uh, what I have really would like you to do, and uh, I've been doing this for a little while now, so uh, when I pray, I'm going to ask you, do you agree? Um, and uh, if you agree with it, um, I would like you to say, I agree. I agree. Um, I, I, I would like, I don't want you to do it passively. I'd like to do you do it a little bit aggressively, you know, like somebody's just built a bucket load of hot sauce on you. You know, it's like, I agree. You know, it's sort of thing. Yeah. Um, and so what, I, what I'm going to pray is just to break some things um, over us in relation to intimidation. Uh, so that as you walk out of this building, as you leave this time, um, you're going to know that not only have you activated, but you've actually dealt with some things. Right, remember, we started with this. Our fight is not against flesh and blood. It's against principalities and powers. Right? And so you've, you've set a, a moment for today to do that. And we're just going to seal that off in prayer. Right? Let's pray. Father, I want to thank you for your great love for us. That you loved us so much that you sent your son to live on this earth, to live a life on this earth and to give his life for us. We thank you that you're here in our midst right now and that you have filled us with yourself, and that we become temples of your Holy Spirit God with us, that you've given us an authority, Father, and we thank you for that. So right now, in the name of Jesus, I cancel every agreement that we have ever made, that we have ever come into, whether we've known it or we have not known it, whether we remember it or we don't with fear, intimidation of any type. I cancel that. I say it's finished. By the authority of Jesus Christ, do you agree? Every expression of fear, whether it's fear of failure, whether it's fear of man, whether it's fear of heights, 
whether it's fear of spiders or it's fear of any type, any paranoia, any area that fear has with us. Whatever the cause, whatever the entry point, whatever the time, today it's time to evict that fear and to replace it with faith that blesses God. Faith that blesses Him. So we receive by power the freeing of those fears right now. We receive it by love right now and we receive it to our mind where it thinks those things. And we say, freedom has come today by the power of the Spirit of God. Do you agree? Every agreement, every covenant, every single thing that's been made on our behalf, whether in our generation or in previous generations, whether it was ancestrally that has come through our line, any agreement on fear, experience of fear, fear that's come out of trauma, uh, any agreement that has taken place that has been made on behalf of us by somebody else. We release ourselves from that today. We say, that's not ours. That finishes here. It doesn't go on to any other generation. It cannot, will not. It's finished. It's done. Do you agree? I agree. So we draw the line today. We mark this day as a special day, as a day in which we can use it as a testimony to say that whenever there comes intimidation in our business, whether there comes an intimidation in our family, whether there comes anticipation, uh, uh, intimidation in any way, shape or form, particularly in the financial area, we can say no, today was a day that was established as a day of authority, of a day of courage, of a day of breaking of every bit of intimidation off in the name of Jesus. Do you agree? And so we receive today a ministry of the Spirit of God, a ministry of God in power. Expressions of power like we've never seen. Expressions of love like we've never seen. Senses of His love. Feelings of His love. And self-control, sound mind. Abilities, which is a fruit of the Spirit like we've never seen. So we say, yes, do you agree? agree. So right now we receive blessing from you, Father. We receive your love. We receive the goodness of God, the kindness of God that enables us to change the way we think, repent according to your word. And as we leave this place today, We leave feeling the goodness of God, the kindness of God, the expression of God in a new things as we enjoy the rest of our day. Do you agree? agree. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. Harvest Valley Worship Center is called to be a refuge for healing and a launch pad for transformation. If this message impacted you today, please let us know in a comment, or you can email us at media at hvwc.com. Thank you for joining us, and we look forward to connecting with you.